Yeah, that looks great. Thank you. Perfect. Um, hello, everyone. My name's Nishani, and I'm one of the IBD Research Fellows working at St George's with Professor Pollock. Um, just want to say it's nice to see so many people logged in today and want to say thank you to CC UK for the opportunity to present today. So we're looking at attitudes towards steroids and their side effects. And oh, I think my don't let me for some reason. Sorry, won't let me flick onto the next slide. Oh, there we go. Sorry, that's a bit of a delay. And what we wanted to do is introduce you to our study today, Taper UC. And whilst we wanted to give you the background to the study, and whilst we feel there is um, a need for the study to be done, we most importantly wanted to gather your um, experience and expertise when it comes to taking steroids in managing flares of ulcerative colitis. So Taper UC stands for Trial of Accelerated Prednisolone Reduction in Ulcerative Colitis. And what we want to look at to see is that are we able to give a accelerated course of prednisolone compared to the more familiar course of six to eight weeks when it comes to managing flares of UC. So why does all of this matter? Well, just a bit of background, um, corticosteroids such as prednisolone, these tablets many of you may be familiar with already, um, form the mainstay of treatment when it comes to managing acute flares of ulcerative colitis. And this has been the case since the 1950s. Um, whilst historical data supports tapering from a dose of around 40 milligrams of prednisolone equivalent over a period of six to eight weeks, actual data on the optimal tapering regimes are actually lacking. And the duration um, in which someone has to take steroids does actually matter. And why? Well, as great as these drugs are in managing flares of ulcerative colitis, um, they are associated with a number of drawbacks. One of the main ones being their side effect profile. So um, what we have noticed over time is that a number of side effects have been reported from various studies, um, but particularly if you're taking them over a longer duration of time. For example, to name a few, diabetes, um, osteoporosis, so this is bone thinning. There's also an increased risk of weight gain, um, eye problems, and in some cases, emotional disturbances that can lead to psychiatric disorders. On the other hand, um, if you rapidly discontinue these drugs, so steroid tablets too soon, um, you're also at risk of developing withdrawal symptoms. Um, so it is a bit of a delicate balance as to how long one should be prescribing a course of prednisolone or steroids when it comes to managing flares of UC. Um, here I just wanted to um, kind of highlight some quotes um, that I got from a website called Healthline um, where patients have summarised in little quotes how they feel when they take courses of steroids for managing flares of IBD. Um, steroids can affect people differently in different ways and to some of you some of these might sound fairly familiar. So I'll just flick through some of these slides. Um, so two words, moon face. Um, I call them the devil's tic tacs. It makes you crazy hungry. I once ate a box of rice checks. I think this could be American. I don't even like rice checks. And then if you're craving pickles and can't get the jar open, it'll leave you crying in your kitchen. Only someone on prednisone would understand that cake and bacon taste better at 3 a.m. You have not had a stomach bloat until you have had a steroid bloat, and it's a whole different ball game. It's kind of like that best friend you love to hate. It can make you crazy sometimes, but you know they're there to help. So from the experience that we've had from patients on the ward or you know, patients we see in clinic, it's almost this toss up, a bit of a love-hate relationship with steroids. Um, on one hand, they're great because they manage your symptoms of ulcerative colitis, but on the other hand, you have these side effects that you're faced with when you take these medication. So despite knowing the good, the bad, and actually with more and more drugs coming on the market, we're still seeing over time, studies are showing that particularly in ulcerative colitis, 
we're using more and more steroids. And not only that, but um, people are actually becoming more dependent on them. So it's quite important to look into this. And the gap in the evidence that we've found is that um, there isn't um, data there with what the optimal reducing regime is when it comes to managing flares of ulcerative colitis. And the whole purpose of our study is to see if we can give a shorter course of corticosteroids compared to that six to eight week course that we're more familiar with by minimizing the side effects, but at the same time achieving equivalent results to that familiar longer course. Now, our study is in the early phases, um, as mentioned by one of our previous speakers as well. Um, and the questions we formulated is, to gain uh, an understanding and explore a bit more as you know, firsthand your experiences and uh, any views you may have in terms of steroid use and managing flares of ulcerative colitis. And also particularly to get um, gain any views on what you think about the study and whether you'd be willing to participate. So that's the basis for our questions. We'll be just taking note of some of these comments made in an anonymous manner, just so we can refer back to this as we move forward with our trial in the near future. So that's the end of the presentation. And we did want to just move on to the questions at this point, if that's OK. So um, I'll kind of talk through these questions briefly, but um, we want to know if you're prescribed prednisolone, what's your usual um, duration is of the prescription. This is something we want to explore a bit more, particularly where you're getting your prescription from, which hopefully we can come to in the discussion. We also want to know whether you'd be comfortable with a shorter course of um, prednisolone. Um, we also want to just explore the side effects that you worry about or that you have experienced in the past. And then lastly, we also wanted to know if you've been offered alternative um, formulations of um, steroids. So we have the more gut specific, um, locally acting steroid formulations there. And very lastly, we wanted to see if you'd be interested in taking in part in our study. Thank you very much. I think maybe whilst people are reading through and answering this um, questions from the poll, we have yeah. got some questions coming in on the Q and A. Yeah. If you'd like to take a look at those, the first one is from Alwyn Jarvis, and that's at one twenty-seven p.m. Okay, I'll just have a look at that. Uh, Alwyn Jarvis. In many people, IV prednisone seems to work better quicker. Is there some merit to start this for a few days and then switch to oral prednisolone? It's a good question and thanks for your question. Well, um, that's true that IV prednisolone, so I guess we're talking about hydrocortisone. Um, I mean, current guidelines do suggest starting IV hydrocortisone in cases of acute severe ulcerative colitis. So that's slightly different uh, kind of the more uh, severe end of the spectrum, I guess, in a flare of your condition. Um, I guess one one question would be, how would you facilitate? It's something that we could consider, I guess, but how would you facilitate um, giving people intravenous prednisolone? Because what we would normally consider is a dose of about 100 milligrams, four times a day. Uh, that might involve multiple visits. Um, if you want to avoid admissions as much as possible. And if someone can take a tablet, then I guess, um, I presume, I mean, this is something we would obviously explore a bit more, that that would be something people would be preferred rather than being admitted into hospital. Um, and intravenous, you know, steroids do them in themselves have um, associated side effects because you're giving it at a higher dose um, in sy sy systemically, so affecting the whole, whole body as opposed to a, a localised action. Um, moving on to the next one, is this the same prescribing steroids for Crohn's? Okay, uh, another good question. So, um, as much as Crohn's disease um, obviously falls in the same category as inflammatory bowel disease, uh, ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease do behave differently. Um, the reason why we wanted to actually focus um, on ulcerative colitis specifically is because, well, um, in Crohn's disease, it, it does become 
slightly different. You don't prescribe everyone a course of steroids. The dose-wise and the reducing regime, yes, is generally speaking the same, but you have to be a bit more selective when choosing um, patients with Crohn's disease um, because if you have what we call fistulating disease uh, where you, people can develop abscesses or where the whole thickness of the bowels is, is affected you actually don't tend to give you want to actually avoid giving um prednisone if possible because of a risk of infection so for this part of our study we don't don't want to also compare outcomes in patients with ulcerative colitis and crohn's disease mixing those kind of mixing patients with in the same group and then looking at our outcomes will introduce a degree of bias so in terms of prescribing steroid dose yes it's the same and the tapering comparison would be the same but for this study we would be focusing on just on patients with ulcerative colitis i hope that answers that question um next question just wonder if professor pollock sorry wanted to um Dropping with some of the questions as well. I know he's logged in as the panelist. Um, yeah, do, can you hear me, guys? Uh, yeah, I can hear you. Jane, can everyone hear me? Yeah. Uh, so, which question were so we? So, I think Karen. Um, Karen's question, I think, is the next one at 1 30. Karen at 1 30. Here we are. Um, about, I think it's a vital area for research, this one. Mm -hmm. um, where can you sign up? So this is, we, we've come to you early to, to ask your, um, for your comments and your responses to the polls, because we're still um, in the process of um, designing the study. Uh, it's quite an early stage in the genesis of the study. And, and we felt it very important to get feedback from patients um, suffering with ulcerative colitis at an early stage. So um, when, when can you sign up? Well, we're looking to apply for um, funding uh, in the middle of next year. So not for a while yet, but uh, um, th thank you for your enthusiasm. That's it's very uh, encouraging. Um. um okay and we can i guess move on to um the well, we've got the polling results shall we move on to the polling results and then we can see um if we have more time to answer some questions yeah let's go through the poll okay perfect so first question if you're prescribed a prednisolone prescribed prednisolone even what's the usual duration of your prescription so it does look like the majority so 64 percent of um our patients are prescribed a course of two to three months which is to what we understand the kind of more familiar course of six to eight weeks um although having said that a fifth of individuals are prescribed a course lasting longer than this um uh, i guess that's something we would like to probably at a later stage, um, explore in a bit more detail as to where those prescriptions are coming from, uh, if that's coming from primary care, if that's coming from secondary care, the specialist, or if that's actually to an extent self-medicating because of either difficult access to um, healthcare services or a personal preference really. So it's quite interesting um, to see that there's still relatively high percentage there of you um, receiving prescriptions for more than three months. Um, Moving on to the next question, would you be comfortable receiving a shorter course of prednisone lasting one month instead of two to three months? So only just about 53% you said yes, 35% um, say not sure and 13% uh, say no. Um, so I guess relatively speaking the majority wouldn't mind to consider but uh, again it's, this is another area that we would be interested to find out um, a few comments um, I don't know if it's possible Jane but if anyone would be willing to kind of put any comments as to why they uh, well they're not sure they wouldn't um, want to receive a shorter course or why they definitely wouldn't want to receive a shorter course it would just be something for us to expand on as we look you know design the trial and move, move forward with it um, the majority of people seem to be comfortable yeah, to come in on that uh, uh, Michelle. Mm. The, 
believe the study is proposed would be for people with mild to moderate flare-ups of ulcerative colitis who've not needed to take steroids in the previous year. So uh, some of the um, comments uh, raise concerns um, because individuals have needed to take repeated courses of steroids and uh, uh, that this study would, would obviously not be a good study for for such such a person mm -hmm. and uh, those those people obviously are, are going to be talking to their doctors about escalating their medical therapy uh, maybe starting biologics and so forth yeah so I guess just to be clear, you wouldn't if you are needing to escalate therapy or if you're planning to escalate therapy, or we've had multiple flares, then this wouldn't be an appropriate um, trial and um, kind of study to be involved in. Um, which of the three steroid side effects concern you the most? So looking at the poll results here, um, it looks like um, mood disturbance is coming at 54%, oh, but I missed, sorry, bone thinning is um, the highest one that we have at 58%, followed by weight gain and mood disturbance, which uh, are a tie at 54%, and then followed by sleep disturbance and increased risk of infection and skin changes and um, being the least, which is, which is interesting. Um, I guess bone thinning is quite common, particularly if you're prescribing current steroid prescriptions in a um, slightly elderly population. Um, have you suffered significant side effects from prednisone? Okay, 60%. Um, I think that's, that's quite high. Um, I guess another thing is, would, would it stop, would you, something to explore a bit more is whether it would stop you from taking the tablets um, would be another thing that we would want to look into in a bit more details because I think that would be important to know for this study. When you need to take steroids, I usually offered budesonide or beclomethasone. Um, so 65% of people say no, um, which is interesting. Um, I mean, there have been studies looking at um, the efficacy of um, budesonide. I'm not sure how many uh, of you are familiar with, but we know the side effect profile of um, the more um, targeted release um, steroids are, are less so. Um, and the question needs to arise if this is why it's not offered, is it because it's a preference or it's, it's just not um, considered at all? Um, something that we need to look at, especially if, you know, looking at the levels of concern in terms of side effects. Yeah, I um, think uh, with budesonide, that's a relatively new treatment. If mm. Um, budesonide and an X, uh, and the other uh, product is beclomethasone, um, and they they probably they probably don't work as well as uh, prednisolone. Mm -hmm. but they do have their place, um, and uh, it, it may be the right thing for you. Obviously, everyone's an individual, uh, and uh, will respond differently. It also depends on the severity. If you flare up, it, it might be more appropriate in a mild or moderate flare up of, of your colitis. Mm -hmm. And then looking at our last question, which I think is quite pertinent, but it says um, if there was a trial comparing one month short course of prednisolone, um, would you be interested in taking part? Um, so I guess. So maybe it's slightly a bit skewed because I think 44% of injuries say they don't have ulcerative colitis, but of those, 32% um, yes, and 3% say no, and 21% state not sure. Um, again, any, any comments would be really helpful um, to know um, in terms of those who do or don't or not sure actually um, as, to, as to why you feel that that's, that's the case. If you feel comfortable um, posting here, that would be really useful to us yeah. yeah just to note that if you if you pop it in the Q&A then we'll be able to download those afterwards and we can feed those back to Shani as well perfect there's, uh, there's a couple of questions about do the chances of long-term side effects from taking high doses of steroids decrease at all over time e.g due to surgery or once taken are the long-term side effects lifelong uh, well 
generally speaking, I think it's fair to say that side effects like bone thinning um, are, are much more common if you take repeated courses of steroids. So uh, there's there's a desire to reduce um, repeat courses of steroids uh, if at all possible, and that's where escalation in medical therapy comes in. Obviously, short steroids are only a short-term solution, um, and is there data about the effect of steroids? Yes, there is. Going way back to the era of True Love and Wit uh, in the 60s, there, uh, I think these were some of the sort of groundbreaking studies back at that time. And uh, the use of steroids completely changed the outlook for patients with IBD when steroids first came on the scene. What we don't know is what the optimal duration of therapy is. Uh, and that's the question we're trying to address. Um, I'll just, um, I'm probably out to skip through, but I'm on Debbie Jones. Um, she said, I've had, I have ulcerative colitis and currently just finished a nine week course. And um, this is my fifth course since hospitalization in March, 2019. On IV failed um, every six weeks. I feel well, but starting to feel dependent on them to stay well. Um, Trade-off side effects to be able to live a normalish life. It would be interesting to know what strength of prednisone to start with. So if I understand correctly, the, the, the advice and the guidance in terms of the starting dose uh, would be near 40 milligrams to 60 milligrams. And studies have shown that prescribing a do dose higher than 60 milligrams hasn't doesn't give um, much additional benefit. And to be honest, what we would advise is, um, I'm not sure this is kind of pertinent to the trial, but um, you know, if you're requiring multiple courses of steroids and guidance suggests kind of more than two courses in a year and also duration comes into it, then there needs to be consideration in terms of escalating therapy um, to the next level. So immunomodulators or the biologic um, family, et cetera. Um, so I guess Debbie, in, in your case, um, it wouldn't be appropriate for you to enter um, this kind of trial because um, you're clearly in a situation where, yes, um, you're taking these steroids, but you're flaring up every time you try and come off them. So that, to us, would therefore automatically exclude you from the trial because you do need to escalate um, therapy in this in this kind of situation. Um, yeah, question there for the, the last question asked. Um, I only took steroids once when I was first diagnosed, so I'm unclear. Uh, I've lost it. So I'm unclear if I require steroids again. What to really expect? Presumably, a one-month trial would result in follow-up that would mean that it is worth having a go to see if that was good enough. Yeah. Well, I, I think uh, you're just the sort of patient who'd be really well suited to the study. Um, and, and what's envisaged would be you know, uh, a group of patients would take the shorter course for four weeks and another group would take the longer course and the study would look to see if there was any difference um, in uh, outcomes and risk of relapse um, after a period of a few months um, to, see, to see if the two treatments were comparable. Um, so, uh, very short courses, I think most people would agree, aren't um, great. So sometimes uh, uh, GPs might give just a short course of treatment uh, in anticipation of follow up with uh, with specialists in the hospital, um, and just short courses for a few days. Um, I don't think anyone would think would be. Um, Um, it's just another comment here saying um, from Zoom Nick, um, I think we're probably working through this a bit randomly, but um, states mentioned that budesonide works better for me. Is this not as generally prescribed? Um, I believe it is generally, it is prescribed, but um, from, from our understanding, from what I can see in terms of the data out there, it's not prescribed as frequently as we can we would expect it to be as under, I guess, under prescribed. But as Professor Pollock just mentioned, 
relatively speaking, it's, I guess it's new, newer compared to prednisolone. Um, and it is something that should be considered. Um, but again, it depends on the severity of the flare that you're experiencing. Um, you know, the potency of systemic steroids is, is probably greater. Um, whereas if it's uh, the degree of flare is slightly less, then budesonide might work better. But it is certainly an option that should be discussed and explored um, when managing flares of UC. Mm, does the individual make weight make a difference um, with feeling side effects in steroids? Um, you know, I'm not too sure about that. The, the, um, in the UK, the, ten, the dose that is used tends to be a standard dose of 40 milligrams. I don't think many clinicians in the UK use more than that. I think in other parts of the world, uh, they use one milligram per kilogram up to a maximum dose of 60 milligrams. Uh, but I, I think the evidence uh, you know, suggest that 40 generally is sufficient for most people. Yeah. And um, Adele, just going to the last comment, um, have managed to avoid steroids over the last two years at the start of UC flare-ups by increasing my maintenance dose of acetyl and switching off. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, and that's, that, that's, that is what guidelines um, recommend. Um, again, depending on the degree of the flare that your um, person is experiencing. So certainly one option would be to up the dose of your um, acetyl and sometimes uh, kind of apply topical, so rectal therapy on top of your tablets. Uh, but for some individuals, despite doing this, um, they still need courses of um, steroids. And this is kind of the group that group where clinicians deem that that prescription is necessary is the group that we would want to focus on. Okay, I think that's just